they were tired of renting a house with the two of them and two rambunctious boys. So they decided to buy a new house. <clears throat> now at the same time, there was a new subdivision being built right on the north side of town, right at the city limits. The lot my daddy picked backed up right to the city limits. And in the back where our fence would be was an open field that used to be a farm and some wooded area. Now, let me explain to you about wooded area in Texas. It's not like what you guys know. It's made up of mesquite trees, resatch bushes, sage bushes, and a lot of prickly pear. That's what we call a wooded area. <laughs> so my daddy approached the contractor and he said, I'm going to wire my own house since I am a master electrician. And the contractor said, oh, that's all right, Mr. Bonifay. We have two young men who are very capable electricians. And my daddy said, and what are their names? And he told them, and he said, oh, really? I happen to sit on the board of the electrical uh, uh, department of the county. And I happen to know those two young men you just named, nice young men that they are, they barely passed their electrician exam. So I will be wiring my own house. <laughs> so once the foundation was built and, and the rafters were put up and, and it was framed and the roof rafters were there and the roof was on, my dad took his drill and started drilling holes in the studs and running the wires. Now my dad decided that he was going to put the state of the art equipment in our house. All the rest of the houses that would be built in that area all had <coughs> fuse panels, with, with not the old kind with the, with that screwed in, but the, the kind that with the fuses that were about as big as my little finger with two little uh, uh, metal prongs on there and you could put them in and pull them out. But anytime you blew one, you had to go buy some more to put them in. Well, my daddy decided we were gonna have circuit breakers. Now that was state of the art at the time. <laughs> it's not standard practice, but then, not so much. So my daddy did that, and, 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 and we, had, we had a great house. We finally moved in, and there we were at 1903 Emily Drive, Beeville, Texas. Soon, uh, other families started building houses in the area. Children moved in, and, and it, it just became a bigger and bigger neighborhood. My brother and I were watching a house be built right across the street from us. And we, we, we observed that every day at 10 o'clock, the workers all took breaks. So we had a great idea. We rode our bikes down to the convenience store. It was called Odd Hour. I think it was the predecessor for 7-Eleven. I'm not sure, but we rode our bikes down there and bought these little, small Coca-Colas for six cents. That included two cents deposit for the bottles. <laughs> and we put them in our baskets and rode our bikes back down every day at five minutes till 10, and then again at five minutes till three, <coughs> because that's when the workers at their breaks. We were standing there waiting. We sold these Coca-Colas <laughs> for 10 cents a piece. Whoa. Think about that. Okay? Very soon we paid our allowance back because that's how we had financed this. And we started putting money back into our piggy banks. Okay, I have to admit, I spent a lot of my money on double bubble 
bubble gum with baseball cards in it, okay? Which uh, I have to say, that started a long time habit, my wife would call it obsession with collecting things. <laughs> Mm -hmm. they there. There. A lot of families moved into the neighborhood. There were children that were my age, there were children that my brother's age, there were children that were older than all of us, and children that were younger than all of us. As a matter of fact, at one point in time, we had enough children in our neighborhood that we could field two baseball teams at the same time and still have people on the bench that could be reserved. <laughs> well, my brother and I decided one day that we wanted to go out into the wooded area, so we got permission from the man who owned the, the, the land. So we went back into the wooded area and we asked him if we could build a fort. And he said, yes, as long as you put, and he gave us some little wire with orange flags on it. He said, just mark where it is so I know where it is. He said, okay. So we went back to our parents' house. We got shovels and picks, walked out there, dug a hole about six feet wide, maybe three feet the other way, and about three feet deep. Then we took all the branches, which took us a long time to find them because there's just not a whole lot in our area, branches to build a roof, and we left an opening just big enough for one person to fit in. In the summertime in, in Texas, it gets very, very hot. Now, at that time, nobody had air conditioning and nobody had televisions. So in the summertime, all the people would bring their lawn chairs out to their front porches or, or their front lawns. And the adults would all gather and talk to each other and visit while the children played. And we had a bunch of games that we played. We played kick the can. We had some stick ball games that we played. But our favorite game was hide and seek. And we did a very sophisticated uh, uh, version of hide and seek. It was team hide and seek. And we always had two teams, the Boons and the Crockets. Because <laughs> so, at that time, those two people were, were our heroes. Okay? They, they just were. So normally, my brother and I would be on opposite teams. But this night, we were on the same team. Here's how the game worked. One team would cover their eyes and start counting, and they could count to 100 while the other team ran and hit. Okay? And at any point in time after that, you could sneak back in and touch the magic tree and yell, Ali Ali in free! Which meant you were safe. Now, if you took the time and to count how many people were on your team, if you got up to half of that, then you won the game. As soon as they started counting, my brother and I took off. You know where we were going. We had not told anybody about this fort that we had built. Along with us was our German Shepherd police dog running right with us, and we were we were all neck and neck, just going, but run, run, run over the over the the barbed wire fence, straight out into this field, and then we dove. All three of us fit into that one little opening that was for one person. We just crammed in there. Suddenly, we hit the bottom, and all of a sudden, we were sprayed. Oh. <laughs> Eyes burning, oh. nose running, my head was exploding. The dog was the first out. My brother was the second out because I think he kicked me into the corner. I was the last one out. I got out. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm throwing up. I'm, I, I just I couldn't even see anything. We started running towards our house, yelling our parents' names. 
and, and, and just, just, I, I, we, we, we went over that, that, that barbed wire fence like it was nothing. <coughs> My mom came out of the front yard, through the house, and out the back door and saw us and, 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 and was just in horror. I mean, she just was like, oh my God, what, what did you boys get into? Uh, and, and, and the dog tried to jump up on her and she was pushing the dog away. And she immediately said, boys, you're not coming in this house until you take your clothes off. So we start taking clothes off and we got down to our whitey tighties and that's as far as I was gonna get. Because I looked at the fence and all our friends were stepping. <laughs> so I, my mom called my dad in and said, go to the store and buy as much tomato juice as you can buy. So meanwhile, she took us in the bathroom, put us in the bathtub. Finally, my dad got back with the, with the tomato juice. We washed, we washed our hair. He went out and washed the dog. <sighs> He's getting out of town. About three days later, my brother and I got the courage to go back and take the fort apart, carefully examining that there was nobody in there. We took the, the sticks off and took the dirt and buried Fort Bonifay was no longer. It then was referred to as Fort Polecat. <laughs> You know, tomato juice in this type of situation was just a, a lifesaver. But even tomato juice could not wash away the shame <laughs> standing in my underwear. In front of my <laughs>